All right, boys, what's going on? Um, I figure I did a video, I don't know, a month ago, a few weeks back, uh, whatever it was, on um, a typical defrost cycle for a walk-in cooler with just air defrost and a time clock and everything. Um, that one had a lot of interest, so now I'm going to move on to a freezer one, just just your basic one, just a, a basic average diagram with um, just a single evap and just the defrost clock, no contactors, no multiple evaporators, this and that. I'm just going to start start with the basics, like you would see something like this in a reach-in, a smaller walk-in, single evaporator systems. So hopefully I can describe this well enough for you guys, and uh, let's get to it. All right, guys, so here's the diagram I'm going to go by. It's diagram two in the old trusty heat craft book that I've mentioned to you guys many times. All right, I've also seen NorCal Dave references in uh, some of his videos as well. So, just gonna start with the basics of the system. We got our defrost clock. This is gonna be our terminal board that is normally inside your evaporator. And then we have our control loop with our thermostat and solenoid. So, how we're gonna start is we have our line voltage coming in. We're gonna go with this being a two, 208, 230 volt system, okay? We have our line voltage coming in, which is always going to power our timer motor on one and N, which is, here's your basic Paragon clock. This is an 8145.20. So we got one and N with our lines coming to it. They are going to be powering this right here, our timer motor, which runs 24 seven every day. And that's what spins around. And when it hits one of these pins, over here it clicks it into our defrost cycle okay so while we were on, we are on refrigeration guys while the refrigeration is running our solenoids open our thermostat is closed and on our clock what we have is the power from one you can see there's this little brass bridge here this goes over to two which powers four okay four comes down you can see it goes over and powers our fans and goes back up through our neutral so that's what's giving our fans power now, when this clock spins around, it hits one of these pins. You can see these little um, levers here. It opens up the two to four one, and the one from one goes to three. And once it does that, it sends one of our power legs over to three, which comes down through. We usually also have a heater limit here too, guys, which is normally one of the clicks-ons. It has a yellow and white wire usually. And then that comes over and powers our heaters and it's back up through the neutral. So there's our, there's our power loop. Our heaters are now getting power. It's really all it does, guys. It just switches over. And say, um, you know, you got your heater limit here. Say all your ice melted or your frost on your coil and this heater got too, I mean, the coil got too hot. This heater limit would open up, which would break this leg, which then stops your heaters from getting power. Okay, so it shuts off the heaters. That's there for a safety. It can also do it on your defrost termination and fan delay. This can open up too when the coil gets to a certain temp. Some are different. Some are 55 degrees. Some are 65. Some I've seen 80. It all depends, but that will also open up and stop the power from going to your heaters. I also want to mention too, guys, in the defrost cycle, because our we stopped bringing power to four, you can also see it goes over to our control loop. That opens up the power for your thermostat and your solenoid. So the solenoid shuts down, pumps your system down, gets all your refrigerant back into your receiver. And then the heaters will power. Your fans will shut off on your coil so the heaters can run. You cannot have evaporator fans running while you have electric heaters. And that is because the, you're sucking cold air through that coil while the heaters are on. They either won't get hot enough. And also, even while they are defrosting, those heaters can pull out water and blow water all over your ceiling, your fan guards, the floor, the box. You can't have that. So that's why freezers need to shut off the fans during a defrost cycle. Now, also with our defrost termination, say this coil got too warm, okay? Say it, say it has a 30-minute defrost cycle, and it's done defrosting in 20 minutes. This opens up and hits the X, which goes to your plunger, which is this right here on the back of your clock. It's this little thing, makes that pop up and it will pop this out of defrost. It will stop this clock from powering your three wire, which powers your heaters. And then after that, we will go back into refrigeration. Now we switch back on to refrigeration. Our power is going back to four, which then opens up our solenoid and starts the refrigerant coming through. 
but you'll probably notice on freezers guys they won't the fan should not turn on instantly that's what our defrost termination and fan delay is for normally the fans will not come on until this senses the coil down in the 20s maybe 20 25 degrees fahrenheit okay then this closes here this is normally your red and your black wire the x would be your brown so once this closes when the coil is cold enough it completes our power loop and then that will go back and it will give power back to our fans and our fans will come on i mean it's really all it is it's it took me a while to understand this, guys. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. When I was younger, you know, you have to learn how to read diagrams. Everything's different in the field. I mean, you can see sometimes you have to have jumpers installed if you read all these little notes here, and sometimes you don't. So you have to know what type of system you have, especially when you're doing a new installation or startup. Like I said, sometimes you have to add or remove those jumpers depending upon the application that you have um, for what type of system. But I mean, this is this is really all it is, guys. It's not, like I said, it's nothing crazy, but I know it can be confusing. Trust me, I, I had a very confusing time with these clocks when I was younger. I, I'm not going to lie, you know, but I basically had to teach myself a lot of this stuff as well. So, you know, a lot of trial and error, but, you know, I mean, sometimes it's really confusing if this defrost termination is bad. You don't know, your fans aren't coming on, but normally all you do is jump out this here the two and one on it which would be your red and your black wire that's how you can diagnose that to see if your fans will work um you know i've learned that like i said over the years but back in my younger day i had no idea i didn't understand how these things work so you got to understand how a system works and how the the control loop works and everything with these and up here like i mentioned in my cooler video this is just your optional pump down switch sometimes those are connected sometimes they aren't but you can they're kind of nice when they're in the condensing unit you can just flip those and it will pump your system down you don't have to you know crank in your service valve on your receiver or your liquid line to pump it down that'll just do it automatically for you but all depends if they're wired in sometimes they are sometimes they're not so like i said that's basically it guys so let me know if you got any more questions i know sometimes it's a lot easier to see this this type of thing out in the field i mean this is our your average clock I mean it's the same thing with the grasslands too they just don't have all the mechanical stuff in the back it's all done internally through a board and with relays and stuff but they really all work the same as long as you have your terminals right and leave and read your <clears throat> read your diagrams correctly so you know what wires are going to wear okay all right guys so that's pretty much it for that um hopefully i explained this well enough i I know it can sound really confusing and it's a lot easier if you can see it out in the field and see what type of application you have. Um, I also want to mention too, a lot of a lot of smaller regions, they won't have a receiver either, so they're not going to have a solenoid in them. So your solenoid's not going to pump down, it's just going to shut the system off. Like a lot of, um, you know, a lot of like all the two and three door true regions and things like that, they don't have, they don't have receivers on them. So the unit just shuts off on defrost and powers the heaters but like i said i always use those heat craft books they're they're a lifesaver guys you can use them pretty much on any type of manufacturer system it doesn't just have to be heat craft or bone they're all pretty much done the same there's just different ways you can do it depending on your application and what you may have for a control system so any other questions guys feel free to ask in the comments um all you older guys that have been watching, if I missed anything, feel free to mention it in the comments to help out some other people. I know I know. sometimes I miss things. I can't do everything perfect, but I try, you know? So <laughs> anyways, guys, I appreciate it again. Appreciate the support. Hope this helps you guys out. Nah, catch your boys in the next one.